Good afternoon, everybody. Jeff Gatick here from Leisure Group Travel and happy to have with me today, Marcus Lescovar from Amadeus River Cruises. Marcus, how are you doing today? Very well. Thank you, Jeff, for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you here. I, I know I say this every Friday, fam, for you folks that do this with us on a regular basis that I'm super excited. But boy, am I excited today to have Amadeus on board. I know a lot of groups are really itching to get back to Europe, uh, whether that be in late 21, 22, moving forward. Um, those that have done European river cruises before know that it is the preferred way to visit Europe. And you guys have got a real exciting lineup. So super excited to have you with us today. Thank you very much. Great. So let me go ahead and start the presentation portion of our show today. So I love the title of this to kick off the best of Europe for discriminating groups. Does this give a sense of sort of your go to market message of the type of travelers that you're looking to attract that sort of discriminating traveler, Marcus? Uh, I think so. Absolutely. Yes. So we are, as you can hear by my accent, uh, we are a, a European company. So we, we, we are Austrians. So based in Austria, based uh, in, in the heart of um, river cruising, really. Uh, and then we have a, you know, we have a 40 year history doing it as well. So uh, absolutely. So if you come with us, uh, we, we are definitely um, a perfect partner for providing you with an immersive uh, and authentic experience. And then, you know, we always say we bring the culture and traditions on board of our ships because essentially this is who we are. So, so very, um, uh, very well placed there with the, uh, with the opening statement. Nice. So you guys have been doing river cruises for 40 years, or did that come along somewhere in, in the lines of the company's development? No, we have been um, operating or we've been founded 40 years ago. So we are a family owned company and, and still the, the family who founded um, the company uh, is still owning and operating it. And then it's, it's a true, it's a true family effort. So we have uh, my boss, Dr. Lüftner, who, who founded the company 40 years ago, he's still involved. But uh, in the meantime, uh, he's got uh, three daughters that are actively involved in running the company in, in, in different aspects. Uh, and so we all work together uh, and, and, and the family is actively involved in everyday operations. And that just makes a real difference. Uh, again, you know, you're coming to Europe, you're, 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 you're the, the family uh, atmosphere, uh, and the what we say gemütlichkeit you know you, you find it on board the ships it's very cozy it's welcoming uh it's just really it's just really unique and 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 our travelers really appreciate that and why that's why they come back uh year after year to 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 travel with us and uh just coming back to the 40-year history so we were actually uh my boss uh, dr lüftner who is the family patriarch uh, actually um developed river cruises uh, you know as, as austrians you know we, we like to go south uh, and, and 40 years ago, we had the Iron Curtain. So it was difficult uh, to go to the Black Sea, for example, because you had all these, um, you had all these countries that are now very easily accessible uh, and worthwhile um, visiting. Uh, you know, it wasn't that easy to do that 40 years ago. Uh, mm. And so uh, the idea of a river cruise was born to bring essentially Austrians down the Danube uh, to see the Black Sea and some of Romania and Bulgaria. And so, uh, so that's how we developed it. it was 40 years ago. And, and now uh, look at how far the industry came. And it's a, it's a, it's a staple uh, in, the, uh, in the travel industry and, and very, very well known uh, to American travelers and travel advisors uh, throughout uh, the U.S. Absolutely. Well, one thing I can say is in doing some research for this and, and working together with a team, um, I was very pleasantly surprised by just the depth of your fleet. And, you know, I know we don't have time to talk about each and individual, each and every individual cruise, um, river cruise ship today. Um, but my gosh, you guys have got 17 vessels on board the rivers of Europe. That's very impressive. Yeah. And, you know, just because we're 40 years old doesn't mean the ships are 40 years old either. Um, so as a, matter of, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, we have uh, the most modern fleet uh, on European rivers with an average age of only 2.5 years old. And, uh, and the family is very much um, invested in these vessels and, and, and they spend 
uh, a lot of money in in in, uh, in building and constructing solid vessels uh, there's a lot of things that you don't see that are essentially behind the scenes such as air lubrification systems that just uh, make the hull glide easier through the waters which means less vibrations from the engines uh, less less noise you know also we, we do a very very nice job when it comes to uh, taking care of our environment of our own backyard uh, okay. being uh, ecologically certified uh, so all of these things are, are, are a big deal to us and and, and we really really you know emphasize on just you know being clean and offering the best product out there what i love about that is it seems as though no matter what ship you pick if you're within that average two and a half years you're not going to be well this is the brand new ship or this is the one built in 1988 um, so size wise i guess because they're applying the rivers of europe they're relatively the same size i know there's some height and some yeah. width restrictions so yeah. passenger wise uh, what's the scale so the uh, 15 out of these uh, 17 ships are um, 135 meter vessels, so 443 feet long. So that, that the ship that you can see here in the middle, so there's uh, in, the, in the middle picture, that's a standard vessel. We call it a silver class vessel, 443 feet long. These vessels can accommodate uh, approximately 168 passengers, uh, which is a low passenger density, gives you a lot more room in the cabins and a lot more room, uh, a lot more uh, room for, for public areas. And then we have uh, a few 100, uh, 110 meter vessels, so a little bit shorter. Uh, and they're mainly uh, on the uh, French rivers, on the Rhone uh, and on the Seine. And, and those ships are essentially the same, but they're shorter because um, of uh, river limitations and lock limitations. So they cannot turn in the river because they would be too long with 135 meters. But overall, the uh, the design uh, and the general arrangements on board these vessels, so that means where things are located, are always the same. So that means if you are familiar uh, and you know one vessel, you essentially know them all. Uh, so okay. we did this in order to make it easier, uh, especially for travel advisors, to really uh, digest the product and be able to sell the product and work with it. I love it. I love it. So let's talk a little bit about the onboard product. Uh, again, just in working through some of the materials here, um, super classy onboard. I, I'm assuming this is indicative of, of what passengers will experience once they hop on board Amadeus. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So as I mentioned before, we have a modern fleet and, and the decor is, is contemporary European. So we, we don't try to bring, you know, the, the the emperor's back, you know, this is this is what you see in Europe. It's modern. It's 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 classy. Uh, it, it's contemporary European. It's very uh, it's comfortable. Uh, it's it's somewhat timeless. So that's that's what you find on board. So every ship has a little uh, different touch uh, to itself. You know, there may be different uh, color patterns. There may be different hues on it. But as I said before, overall, uh, you find the same uh, quality uh, and, and overall style in all of these uh, vessels. Cool. Well, the infinity pool we're looking at there in the upper left-hand side, uh, that's pretty awesome. I've not seen anything like that on a river cruise vessel before. So yeah. kind of a fun way to, to watch the river go by or the evening go by. Yeah, absolutely. And so those, those are uh, little features that, um, uh, as I mentioned before, the general arrangement is always the same. But we have little features that, that change a little bit. So this infinity pool here is on board the Amadeus Provence. Uh, that ship cruises in the south of France, uh, where it's, you know, it's perfect to have a, a, an outdoor pool, an infinity pool uh, on ships that are cruising, you know, in the, in, in the northern part of the Rhine, for example, you know, there could be an indoor pool or there could be different features on board. But, uh, but there's always something special that you can discover uh, on, on these vessels. So um, in not only a place to discover, but a place to relax. And it looks like you've got some pretty chill upper deck areas uh, or lounges as well, uh, bars, restaurants. Yes, so, uh, so the upper deck area here, as you can see, so this is unique, um, or actually it's unique to every cruise, uh, river cruise ship out there. Everything that you see on the upper deck or the sun deck, uh, as we call it, needs to be easily collapsible. It needs to be light, easily collapsible. Um, the reason for that is because, you know, these river cruise ships have to um, move underneath bridges. Uh, and sometimes, depending on the water level, there's just a few inches left, really. So everything up here that you can see 
has to be light and collapsible. Um, uh, but it's a great area. It's 443 you know, feet long and there's a lot of space to, to find your own um, part and uh, you know of, of, of the deck to just relax and and and, and then enjoy uh, and then the inside areas of course and that's something that just I mentioned before you and there's a lot of room in public areas and a lot of different public areas uh, and so for example here on the right side you can see uh, the panorama bar uh, so that's a feature on every uh, of these cruise ships but just give you an idea about you know the, the, the passenger density so uh, on, a, on a 168 passenger ship for example this panorama bar will be geared to accommodate 195 so even if the ship is completely full uh, there's always additional space you never have to search for the last chair you never have to you know pack into some next to someone this is it's always feels generous it always feels uh there there's there's you know additional space which is really nice yeah well i, I think especially even though we're going to be coming out of covid and people are going to be vaccinated large crowds we're just not familiar with that so if you've got a little extra room to move around and don't feel like you have to reserve seats for your uh, travel mates or you've got to get there early to make sure that you get a seat um that just makes the experience that much more comfortable no, absolutely um, tell me about some of the appointments in the staterooms. What's unique about Amadeus? So the staterooms are, uh, so we have, we have two different, actually, this is, a, this is an interesting comparison. So we have two different um, uh, models here. So on the, on the left hand, um, you see uh, a stateroom uh, on board our silver ships. So those are uh, the ships that are made, the 135 meter vessels, including the Amadeus Provence. And what we have there is uh, we have this unique um, sliding window that you can see here. So that window actually uh, comes down with a touch of a button uh, oh, to cool. where you see that, yeah, where you see that wood railing. So what we did again, this is this all comes with, you know, 40 years of history uh, really uh, make a difference, you know. So that means there's there's a lot of uh, experience a lot of uh, things that that we pack into this, and, and where we where we just you know develop these vessels and they involve. Um, so what we you know sometimes you you have passengers, especially when they come from ocean cruising, they they're asking about uh, balconies, you know, and 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 but really you know once you understand the river and once you you know done it long enough, really the question is well why do you need a balcony? Wouldn't it be nicer to just have a larger cabin, do something? With this cabin and then if you know you, you still have the option uh with our feature here to you know let the air uh and, and the sun in by lowering that window uh and uh so that's what we did essentially we pushed the cabin out there's more uh, space in the cabin uh you have this um panoramic window feature that where you can still open up the cabin but in addition to uh, that you get now a walk-in closet which is just unique because as, as you know from river cruising cabins are always tight and then you yeah. you have your luggage everywhere so these walk-in closets are a great feature to just keep the cabin clean and, 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 and a place to really organize um, your um, your luggage uh, and, and your clothes and you get a larger bathroom as well so so something that works really well but, and then what about on the right? What are we looking at there? So on the right, so you have here, this is uh, one of uh, the cabins on the 110 meter vessel. So there's, you know, there's only three of those, but you can see a suite here. And then in the suites, we do have uh, a little walkout balcony. So you can see the difference here. So on the one hand side, you have the, on the A and B cabins, you have uh, the full uh, panoramic fronts. And then in the suites, uh, you have uh, a little balcony and you can see here there's a there's a sliding glass door so you can walk out to a little balcony so those are the differences but overall um, those uh, those cabins are very very functional again the design you know European uh, contemporary European and very very comfortable and also um, you as you can see here the beds they all seem um, they're all shown as matrimonial style but all of these beds can be custom configured so you can either divide them in two uh, individual beds for travel companions that are just sharing the cabins or you can push them together as you can see here uh, matrimonial style so that's that's uh, that's uh, valid for every cabin on every ship 
Yeah, they got another real smart feature, and I, and I love the terminology matrimonial style. I, we, we don't use that much here in the U.S., but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure people get the, get the point. Um, right. you, you alluded to, to uh, washrooms earlier. I, I don't know that I've, I've typically done any of these presentations where I'm showing people washrooms, but um, these look really, really well appointed. So just you know, give me sort of a, a brief overview on uh, what we've got here. Yeah, so that's another, you know, another highlight. So the the the, the bathrooms in these uh, ships uh, are nice and and and, and large, uh, and uh, you know, I alluded to that before. You know, we really invest a lot of money in these ships to have proper uh, mechanical uh, structures and, and proper machinery. So that means if you take a shower, you have good water pressure. The water doesn't run hot and cold. It always stays hot because you have proper uh, proper machinery on board that guarantees that even if the ship is fully on and in the morning. Uh, I've been on a lot of river cruise ships and, and that's not always a given. So th these are just really staples of, of the quality of these vessels. Uh, so they're just, you know, everything functions great and then works great. You have a good amount of space on everything. Uh, and and they're just easily accessible. Um, all of these bathrooms, uh, so it's it's they're great features, and they're all uh, they're all fully stocked. Uh, you can see it here in the pictures with uh, with Rituals, which is a high quality European uh, spa product. So um, so just uh, just very very pleasant. Good. Um, having cruised uh, Europe's waterways before, I know onboard dining is always a special experience. What's unique about what Amadeus does in the dining rooms? Yeah. So unique here we can see it in the picture on the left side for example so you go to europe and everyone you you you, you ask you know they all have uh you know different favorites that they like about europe but a lot of people just are really uh you know they, they just love the breads because it's so different than what we have here you know breads are fresh there's a lot of variety uh, you know, so we have a baker on board the vessel. Uh, he gets up at two or three in the morning and every day on board the ship, we bake fresh bread. So what you usually expect to find when you are, you know, traveling through Europe and going into bakeries and having access to all of these wonderful foods that people love so much, um, we bring the traditions on board our vessel uh, and we do the same thing. So, so, so you can, you can um, have that on board. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things. And when I come on board, it's just a fresh bread. And, and everything we make on board the vessel is all made from scratch. The bread, the soups, sauces, desserts, everything. Nothing is frozen, comes on board. Uh, nothing is coming out of, you know, uh, prefab bags or anything. Everything is made fresh on board, just as you would expect it when you come to Europe. So that's one of uh, the highlights here. And obviously, there's always multiple choices available for every meal for every course uh, you can try uh, the local dishes we have you know contemporary uh, uh, or international cuisine you know that, that that's that's a palate pleaser for everyone so there is there's a lot of uh, focus uh, as Austrians and I'm coming back to our Austrian uh, hospitality is a lot of focus on food and beverage good food good wine uh, so that's that's a staple on board see almost floor to ceiling windows there too in the dining rooms too so just everybody's got a panoramic view of the surrounding scenery very cool yep, absolutely um I, I pulled that slide on the right specifically i guess you guys have onboard bicycles so people that when you get into to port you can uh, do a little touring on your own if you want to is that standard or is that on some and not on others we do so that's standard for all of the vessels so uh, we have you know our shore excursion uh, our shore excursions are uh, flexible, they're optional. So that means uh, you don't have to, you know, if they're, if they're included, you pay for everything, but, but they're optional, so you can add them. And so that's where these bicycles come in because we, I see more and more people that say, oh, you know, we are in, I don't know, in, 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 in Rüdesheim or in, 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 you know, in, in Mannheim or in Speyer and, and, and you know, it, it's nice and, 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 and intimate there. We, we, you know, we don't want to follow a guide around or we wanna, don't want to sit on a coach. We just want to, explore on our own and it's perfectly safe I, I really encourage people to do that uh, and so we have a fleet of bicycles uh, on every river cruise ships those are included uh, in in your fare so we don't rent them out you just ask them ask us to 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 take them down for you as you can see in the picture and then uh you know and i have sometimes i see people that just go for for a local ride you know and then come back sometimes there's people that will follow the ship as we reposition the ship 
you know, during the day and then just they just ride along on the on the uh, next to the ship, you know, as we position it. So there's a lot of opportunity to get some exercise, to have uh, additional adventure, to just go explore by yourself. And the bikes are a great feature. Good, good. And then um, as far as the optional excursions, um, when you uh, get into port, um, by and large, how many would you say are available uh, in any given destination for people to choose from? Uh, and on the on the shore excursions, we have uh, we have a standard shore excursion program that runs throughout this year, and then starting with twenty two. And I think that's you know what we what we most likely focus on now, given that that COVID is still you know amongst us here. We have multiple choices uh, for every port, so uh, you can uh, choose to to have two or three different. Uh, or participate in two, uh, two or three different excursions that uh, will run simultaneously. And, and they're all focused, uh, you know, either on, you know, doing a city tour and, 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 uh, and uh, with, with, with a standard city tour, or doing something that's more culinary uh, oriented, where you then visit a brewery, for example, or, or you know, or a chocolate museum. So, so there's, there's a whole new um, palette of different shore excursions available and and those are all um, on our website as well so that's always a good um, resource to just see what we have and what what we offer uh, and then you can either you know buy them beforehand you can add them uh, on the ship so so it's really very flexible well, I, I think the thing that's important to note here is if, if you've not done this before, folks, the history of Europe unfolds on these waterways. That's how transportation options were built back in the day when these cities were being developed. So when they're taking you into a destination, you're dropping right into these historic districts. So you're right in the center of the action in many circumstances. So uh, just, just a great way to be able to experience these uh, historic medieval cities uh, and, and, and and, and, you know, whether it's a guided tour, you're doing it on your own or a bicycle, just just phenomenal experience. Yeah. And then also for groups, uh, really quick for groups, we also have a portfolio of um, custom tours available that we don't sell to individuals. Uh, those would be there would be a minimum uh, participant uh, count required. And we have several small tour operators or agents that uh, do group travel uh, that will um, opt into those because it gives them, uh, it differentiates them uh, from, from the, 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 the product that's uh, out there and available to the public. Um, and a lot of our clients like that very much. And um, just recently, we've been very successful with our wine cruises. So we have a special wine program in the South of France and on the Rhine, uh, and that seems to be a, a real, um, a real highlight uh, for a lot of our group operators and group agents. Um, you know, they 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 have uh, they have really good traction with that, uh, especially for next year. So it's something to keep in mind, um, uh, to and or to ask us uh, for you know if if you're interested. Sure, absolutely. Um, you, obviously, with 17 ships, you guys are on a lot of uh, riverways throughout Europe. Um, some highlights, uh, maybe looking at the 2022 season, um, anything unique, anything special that you guys are doing that you want to point out? Yeah, so absolutely. So we are uh, just looking at the map. So we are, you know, on the Rhine, Main and Danube. So essentially, uh, all the way uh, between Amsterdam and the Black Sea. Uh, on that river system, uh, and then we are on the Rhone uh, in the south of France and on the Seine cruising round trip Paris. But what's so special for next year is that there's two events uh, that, that only take place every 10 years uh, and that are an absolute highlight. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, they, they, they coincide next year, uh, again, due to the pandemic. So we have the Over Amagao Passion Play, uh, that's an event that takes place every 10 years, uh, should have taken place in 2020 and was pushed into 2022 due to the pandemic. Uh, so that's again for, for a lot of um, agents that do groups, uh, also group organizers, that's always great. Uh, so there's, uh, it's, it's in especially uh, this time around, it's very meaningful, the Obama patient play really, you know, results from the Black Plague and, and, and was, a, was a commitment from um, the people in the village of Over Amagau, you know, uh, to, to essentially get this pandemic, you know, 
uh, out and, 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 and be spared. So it's very, very, very powerful around this time. But so that's uh, a pre cruise option that we offer. Uh, we have five dates uh, between May and September of next year that we offer as guaranteed departure. So it's ideal because even if you have an FIT that is interested or a small group, or you don't want to guarantee uh, the, 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 the number of cabins or to, to, to be able to, to have a, uh, a minimum participant count. So these are guaranteed departures. They are there. Uh, there's still space available and uh, we, you can combine them either with a two night, uh, three day over Amagao Pre and then a seven night cruise on the Danube or with a seven night cruise on the Rhine. And if you do the Rhine, you can hit both uh, of those unique um, uh, events at the same time. The second event being the, uh, the Floriad. So that's uh, an event that again, takes place every 10 years. It's a, it's a hearty, uh, horticultural um, garden expo. Uh, and it's really, really interesting. This is just uh, an unbelievable uh, show that, that, that takes place this year or next year in Alsmeer, just outside of Amsterdam. And then so on the Rhine option, you could do the over Amagar Passion Play to start out with uh, and then end your cruise uh, on the last day with a visit to Floriad. So uh, a lot of opportunity, especially considering that a lot of people have uh, not been able to really travel or visit Europe for two years, probably uh, at that point. So uh, a great way to make up um, some of this uh, lost time and, and, and to really hit the highlights here. And again, so we offer, we offer both options um, and, and still have space for both. And if I'm correct, you're packaging Oberammergau, or does the group have to do the Oberammergau portion on their own? No, we package it. So it's it's really oh. it's, it's turnkey. Uh, so it starts with a, a meet and greet in Munich. Uh, you have a through coach. So even if you because it's only two nights, so you can if you have more luggage, you can keep that on the coach. Uh, the coach and a guide will stay with you. So we'll basically pick you up in Munich at the airport. Will We'll bring you to Ober Amagau. You know, we'll, we'll do uh, the two nights uh, in Ober Amagau with you. Uh, and then that guy that picked you up at the airport in Munich will drop you off at the ship and hand you over to the cruise director. So it's all inclusive. Everything's taken care of. Uh, and again, that's why these are so uh, nice because even if you have an FIT or group, you don't need to take care of the transportation. You don't need an additional guide or assistance. It's all taken care of. Uh, it's all managed by us. It's just there. We also have um, brochure shells uh, that we did for this. If you'd like to do a little marketing, uh, so it's it's turnkey. It's ready to use, uh, and it's uh, it's a really good it's a really good option. And we've we've been very successful with it so far. Yeah, I, I would imagine so. Oberammergau sells out continuously, and the fact that we've had this sort of rift in the process where it got pushed to twenty two, I think that's a really unique strategic opportunity, especially for faith based groups. Absolutely. Um, and then I've, I've done Floriad before. I, I, you and I talked about this previously. And, you know, calling that a garden show is like calling the Mall of America a strip mall. It is just a phenomenal <laughs> yeah. experience. Once it is, it's one of those once in a lifetime, you really have to go yeah. to it. And I think, you know, one thing that people have really realized um, through this pandemic is that time is precious and life is precious. And if you don't do it now, you might not get a chance to do it. So the fact that you guys have got space and you can coordinate the itineraries on the land portion, the cruise, uh, boy, those should be really good sellers going into next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Marcus, you great job, great presentation. I can't wait to get back uh, uh, the waterways of Europe, hopefully with Amadeus. Um, if groups are interested in uh, contacting you guys, securing space, what's the best way to move forward? Yeah, so we, as I mentioned before, we are, we are a European company, but we do have an office uh, just outside of Chicago. Uh, and that's where I'm located. That's where I'm uh, right now. Uh, so um, we are uh, here to uh, assist, um, you know, especially our uh, US-based clients uh, and agents, of course. So you can uh, either call us. We have a toll-free number here that you can see on the screen at 844 Four six two six seven two seven at any time, or, or you can email us at info at amadeus-rivercruises.com, or you can also, if you'd like, like some more information, just browse some of the twenty-eight different itineraries that we do throughout Europe. You can also go 
onto our website at amadeus-rivercruises.com. But if you have any questions, uh, especially you know now in the next few weeks, uh, none of us are still traveling yet. So if you have any questions, uh, you can call our number. You know, ask for me, uh, Marcus. Uh, and um, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, for you, or to to you know, we'll look up any availability uh, and 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 try to to accommodate you. And then maybe you know, if you're interested, we'll be happy to hear from you.